Hi, my name is Danielle Zanay. In 2015, I was diagnosed with bipolar depression. I was a sophomore in high school. I, my parents just noticed I was lashing out a lot. I was getting into fights. Um, I would be so worked up one minute and then be completely fine. So they checked me into therapy. And that's when she did a few tests, gave me a few, um, asked me a few questions and on her own and she diagnosed me with bipolar depression. Told my parents, offered me pills to take uh, medication um, and at the time I refused. So me not taking them, I was just coping it with how I felt like I should cope with it and it wasn't working. <laughs> I was lashing out because I didn't feel like I was getting the attention I needed from my parents at home, which I didn't. Um, my dad's in the military so I never saw him and my mom's an environmental engineer so she was traveling all over the world. Um, so she suggested I get a dog, or they get me a dog, something that loved me unconditionally, give me all the attention in the world. Her name's Peyton. She's a little Jack Russell Beagle mix. Um, I took care of her. She, it definitely helped. I took her on walks. I was excited to come back to school, come back from school and walk her. But I would still get sad occasionally. I would lash out, obviously, um, just being a teenager. <laughs> when I graduated high school, um, I was pretty much good. Like I, I knew, I learned what triggered it, and if I got lonely, I figured out other ways to, you know, I joined um, little groups. Um, my parents had a, these little life groups from my church. We'd get together, and there were youth groups, and I just talked about how I felt, and they understood. So this was two years later after I graduated high school um, in September. Um, it came back. <laughs> Because I'm in a new city, don't have friends, don't have that group, um, don't have my dog. So it was tough. Um, growing up now, I'm not as like eager to have friends and eager to have like all this attention that I needed when I was younger. And modeling for me is something I love so much that when I get sad, I'm just like, I just think about, like, I'm loving what I'm doing. I think I kind of said that earlier, yeah, that just pray, you know, it really helps. People don't know, like, when you're depressed, it's one of the worst feelings, like a knife is in your heart and there's nothing you can do to get it out. And you keep telling yourself you're, your situation's not that bad, but it's like that knife is in there, you know? So it's like, whew, it's a lot. and. I wouldn't wish depression on my worst enemy, so I know not everybody believes in God, but I, I don't know how other people get out of it. I literally praying, literally, I begged God to heal my heart, and he did, you know? So, yeah, uh, I don't want to get emotional, but I'm happy that I was able to get out of it early so it didn't affect my modeling, what I love to do, um, and this program. It's amazing what y'all are doing, because like I said, depression is real and it's tough. And I feel like it's not, there's not as many um, people out there willing to reach out and help you. So the fact that y'all are doing this, you have to go through um, trying everything, because that's what my parents <laughs> tried to do for me, and, and that's what I had to do. You know, you really don't know until you try everything. You know, with the dog, the pills, everything, it was just like, I don't know, it just didn't work for me. But I had to go through it to realize, I don't know why, but it just didn't, you know. So I feel like what really, like I say, it was praying too, but I think I had to really leave Virginia too. Because I feel like there were so many people putting their opinions in my head, the therapist and all this other stuff, and I had to get away from that. Not necessarily like moving out of Virginia, but moving out of that environment. Because I found that I loved modeling and that I, I, I loved it then, but it was just the, all the opinions distracted me from that. And I think once you find what you love and that's something that you're passionate about, that illness was, will not even be able to touch you because you're so driven, so eager to live that passion. When I 
started believing in God. He's like, I, don't worry, I got you, something better is coming, you know? So I think that's what played the big part. I, I had hope for something better. When I first moved out here, I had stars in my eyes. I was like thinking like, I'm gonna get signed. It's gonna be a piece of cake. I wanna see celebrities. When it didn't happen in the first year, it was like, whoa, what's wrong? I didn't get signed. I was struggling to make ends meet in my, for rent in my apartment. And um, it was tough, and I think that's when it went back down again. But I didn't also do anything to prepare myself. I think that's, that, that's I should have done something. But I was just so starry-eyed. Like I had my agent, I had an agent in Virginia, and I had all these set up with the, all these big agencies like Next, Wilhelmina, Ford, all of them set up through her. And I was like, I'm gonna sign to one of them, I have to. But it was kind of tough. So my dad, he had already booked his flight to go home before I actually, like we found, we, I couldn't stay in that place. So, but we didn't have enough time to find a new place. So I was literally, my dad's in the military, so I was staying at a USO. I was staying there homeless, didn't have a place to stay, just staying there and he left me and I'm, that's when my kind of depression started for me getting back into that dark place. I went on some IG live with some celebrity I was dying to work with, model with, and she was like, yeah, you're here now, we're gonna work on I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing with my condition, like I get so happy with stuff, like it's, ugh, I get so worked up and then I get down again. And then I think like two days after that, I got a call saying a friend of a friend needed um, someone to stay, but it wasn't available to October. From that hype from the celebrity called me and went back down again, I was like, oh, another month. I came in September, I was like, I can't be here another month. But I went to go see the house anyway, and she let me stay there early in like a little closet. So she was like, I don't have a free bedroom, but she was like, you can stay here for free because I don't want you at that place. And that was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, okay, it's gonna get good. I did what I kind of did in LA. I figured it out. I joined model groups. I, you know, um, talked to even my landlady. She's so sweet. She's still, everything. I still live at the same place. Just to remain focused and don't take things too personal, because I would do that all the time. Um, just keep praying. <laughs> keep being positive. Keep smiling. Every time, every time I go to an audition and just hear it, it's just, I just think it came with experience or going through it so much that now I just know, like, you never, like you said, you never know what someone's going through or what someone's